All right, I'm going to bring up a, a thing. Lance from the Surfs is someone that I quite enjoy. And Destiny, who is... Uh, uh, Destiny is more of a, a debate bro. I don't like Destiny particularly much. I find him obnoxious. And uh, they had a couple of different uh, um, lockings of horns lately. And I wanted to address them. The first one is... Just me being pedantic as a guy who works in IT. They got in an argument over... Google has had a policy where um, staff have name badges and they refused to update name badges for people who have um, are, are in the process of transitioning, things like that. So... Um, so I'm just going to hit play. Is this... Yeah, it's this one actually. Sorry. So that's, this is Destiny, who I don't like, and who reminds me of the guy from Dazed and Confused, who's like, I want to dance. And then this is Lance, who is Canadian, and you got to love Canadians and support, all that kind of stuff. So here we go. Just like that so, much better? So the, the companies that I've been specifically calling out online is I'm doing it for a very specific reason. For example, Google. We're, while Google puts the uh, you know the rainbow logo on their their icons and all that kind of stuff, they are actively forcing uh, their employees to have to use dead names on their ID tags if they haven't been able to change them for whatever reason, usually economically, through the state level. So that to me is incredibly fucked up. So I think it's how is that incredibly fucked that we up? Forcing employees to use dead names on their ID tags if they haven't gotten it changed with the state. My guess is this is probably had, policy almost everywhere, right? How do you have people that just give whatever name they want if it's not registered anywhere with a state body? I don't, I'm, I'm genuinely asking you, I don't know. I haven't heard about this issue, but that sounds like common sense to me. Of course you have to go by your state registered name. Because it's, it's okay, well, first off, it's not something that every single person can afford, right? The ability to change your name is usually something that's privileged for people who can afford to do that. Secondly, the ID takes themselves, we're not talking about just verification badges, we're talking about what they have to wear as part of their, like, their everyday getup. It was something that was, like, spread around through the, the alphabet union right now. Uh All right, so I'm going to stop it there. Essentially, what Destiny's saying is that if you work at Google, as far as he knows, from a security perspective, and he goes into further explanation of this. Um, if you work at Google and you have a little security badge and that's tied to your name and it's super important that your name is correct because, oh my God, security. It, it controls what rooms you can go into. Um, and Lance is like, I don't think it's a security badge. I think it's just like an ID card. Um, so the two of them sort of uh bounce back and forth about that but both of them admit that they don't really understand well turns out your old buddy jim understands things because i work in it and i'm actually uh, tangentially involved right now in a project that is um replacing the card reading system that we use at the place i'm contracted at so i'm, I'm actually a little more familiar about these than most people um and then there's a, there's a bigger issue that I'm going to point out. First and foremost, your security is not based around your name. This is, I don't even know why anyone would think this. Your security is based around uh, a unique identifier, an employee ID or whatever you want to call it. But there is some number because there could be two companies or two people with the same name in the same company. And then that gets messy. That's why we have this unique employee ID that you can use in all of the applications so that you tie everything together and I can, you know, properly navigate information. Um, so I may be like 24601 or something like that in a company. Um, I'm not. That was Jean Valjean in Les Miserables, but you get the gist. Um, that is the number that matters. Where your name comes in, uh, really the only challenge with, with changing someone's name, and this happens a lot, and companies will try to push back on like when people get married or divorced and they'll be like, oh, I, I really don't want to type in my old name. I want my new name uh, as my login ID. Because, um, you know, most companies, your, your name is like, or your login ID is like, you know, R. Jones or whatever. And if R. Jones gets married to Smith, then they would want to be able to type in R. Smith. Or if R. Jones hates J. Jones and gets a divorce from J. Jones and never wants to see that motherfucker again, Probably don't want to constantly, every morning, type in R. Jones. Oh yes, that was the story of my hate and awful relationship. So, companies hate changing these because it is actually tricky behind the scenes. 
Um, you have to do it in a very particular fashion that can cause <coughs> cause little stupid problems on the network that uh, like so you have an, a, a folder that's associated with your login ID in Windows world and you basically say you know in my my folder would be R Jones because I'm R Jones right now and um, when I become R Smith it's not as easy as just you rename that folder. Sometimes there are things that can break and it can, it can be a bit of a hassle. However, companies also figured out they pretty much can't do anything about it. This is life. So they suck it up and they deal with it because that's important. I remember Shan telling me the nightmare of WestJet changing her info when we got married. Oh, hell yeah. Companies, um, and even when they don't fight doing it, it, there's always nightmare because of all these little tiny things. Applications where your access is associated with your uh, user ID, not your employee ID, your user ID, is an example. So you are the administrator of the Snook and Bookin app, and then when you get married or you get divorced and you change your login ID, it now doesn't recognize that R. Smith is the person who is associated with that, uh, uh, that access. So, you know, it, it creates uh, problems. That's why we have employee numbers and why a lot of people are trying to push away from using user IDs or first name, last name or whatever as a, a form of identification because it's not. It's not identification at all. It's just silly. Um, the second thing, and I can't speak to whether Google did this or if this is just rumor or hearsay or whatever, but... If someone got married and they wanted their name, let's just say someone married Mr. Google, Johnny Google, and they were so proud of that and they wanted their name, their, their ID badge to say Johnny Google, that doesn't change your security policy because it's not tied to your name. What matters is everyone who you meet in meetings and stuff is going to, oh, this is Jenny Google, Jenny Google's married to... Joe Google, isn't that pretty cool? Um, and then when they go to look you up in the in the company directory and they can't find Jenny Gay at Google because Jenny Schwarsky or whatever is your maiden name is what it's under, that causes problems too. So from a trans perspective, if I'm introducing myself in the office living as a, uh, you know, so I am biologically male, if I was a trans woman and I was like, oh, my name is Jenny. Um... People searching for Jenny aren't going to go, I wonder, I wonder if Jenny's actually Jim. Like, that's not a thing. So it's, it's better to line those things up and make sense of it. Um, not doing so is, it's dead naming. And it's an asshole thing to do. Um, and there's no call for it. So there's no justification. There's no security policy that if, if I change my, my name from Jim to Jenny, that suddenly I'm not going to be able to get access to the 14th floor. That's dumb and stupid and wrong. So destiny, you are wrong. Not that you will see this because I am nobody. Uh, Lance, you are right. Um, and, and that's just, that's just how shit is. Sorry. The other thing... I didn't think this was a matter of debate. Oh, the you know what? Before before I do that, let me just pop open. I want to bring up UN definition of genocide. This is what they're uh, arguing about. So the United Nations, uh, I think it's under the Genocide Convention here. Um, yeah. Definition of genocide. Article 2 of the convention defines genocide as any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, ra uh, racial, or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily harm or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting uh, on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. And E, forcibly transferring uh, children of the group to another group. So if we look at this in the residential school context and also CFS and the 60s suite or scoop and all of that, um, 
killing members of the group. I don't know that we've actively in in you know recent years been actively killing so much as um like you know policy wise so much as turning a blind eye which i think still counts but um you know if you're an rcmp and you kill a indigenous person oops a doodle uh causing serious bodily uh bodily or mental harm to members of the group i would say that a great deal of canadian policies cause uh, uh mental harm to uh, indigenous people deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part i would say Yes, residential schools, uh, reservations, um, the the conditions of reservations, those are all examples. Uh, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Well, yeah, forced sterilizations, both of male and female, have been a, a huge problem. I would also add in taking babies away uh, would be an example. And then forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Um, the whole residential school thing, the whole CFS thing. So it's it's pretty clear that Canada is hitting all those definitions of genocide when it comes to um, Indigenous people. So this is what Lance is reacting to. Canada has not only committed genocide, but that the genocide is ongoing. I was wrong. I was wrong. This became a very big back and forth and has continued right now between me and Destiny and, and you can stop saying Destiny's friend. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Uh, talking about China versus Western country, LOL. Again, really upset by me using the term cultural genocide. Uh, China and Canada are committing genocide, LOL. Uh, then another one. What proof is there of an ongoing genocide in Canada right now? I then wrote, there's two big links. Can you demonstrate how there is an ongoing genocide in Canada against indigenous people? Still waiting for that. Clearly did not read either of the links that I provided. But uh, yeah, we're still going back and forth. Uh, and then, of course, everyone who is within Destiny's purview uh, started thinking that this was a great time to throw their hat in the ring. And that brings in Bastia. The United States must act at once to stop the ongoing genocide in Canada. If the Trudeau regime will not stop committing genocide, we must use military force to end the genocide as soon as possible. Never again must mean never again. And then, of course, you know, this old picture here. Um, there's a lot of context in which I would find this joke funny, uh, especially the idea of invading Canada for its oil resources, which is something the U.S. Uh, has a tendency to do. In the grounds of what we're talking about here, it's kind of morally reprehensible because, again, uh, this isn't really like open, fertile ground for comedy. Like... I, I don't know what you would do for follow-up. Are, are you going to break out the Holocaust jokes next? So that's, and that's what I wanted to, to bring up. So this is one of those things people do um, where they, um, you have like, I would not argue that the Uyghur genocide in China is a genocide. Uh, the Chinese government are doing genuinely fucked up shit over there. I would say that, Palestine is an ongoing genocide. And just because it's not as obvious, we go, oh, Canada. Canada's not doing a genocide. Don't be silly. It's the same bullshit argument as the people who are like, show me a single law that actively says you can murder indigenous people. That would be systemically racist. There's a lot more to it than that, Pucky. Um, I don't know why people have a hard time with this, but uh, it's... It's pretty simple. Turns out, hard take, pretty much every genocide is going to be a bad thing. Um, and and there's really not a lot of, of room for like, hey, maybe some genocides are, you know, like they're, they're just small enough that we shouldn't really call them a genocide, you know, like, you know, we... we we focus on the Jews. The Slovenians was a much popular, uh, smaller population. That that doesn't count as you know, like, like that. What a ridiculous take that is. Um, I and that that shit just annoys the fuck out of me. Um, so again, Lance, you're correct. Destiny, you're an idiot. Uh, Destiny's a debate bro, and he's uh, quite a, a large debate bro. I hate watching his debates because he's like super liberal and uh he's a very effective debater but i just find most of his takes to be kind of hot garbage um and i'm not saying that as a guy who's like oh yeah destiny challenge me i'm not a debate bro i probably I, there's a part of me that's been like oh maybe i should try a debate but then i i watch debates and i'm like 
I don't feel the need to sit in a room with, uh, or, you know, digital room with, you know, people like Big Papa Fascist and be like, no, critical race theory isn't what you say it is, you big dummy, and have them be like, oh, you're just a liar for Jeff Bezos. Like, ugh, I don't need that in my life. Uh, I said, you know, it's bad when China's calling you out for genocide. Justin Trudeau had an okay clapback, but yeah, fuck me. Body count shouldn't determine the validity of genocide. Absolutely. And and there's nothing in that UN definition that's like, you know, you must be at least this genocidal to ride this ride. All genocides matter, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. Hashtag. God, what a, what a weird thing to have to talk about. That, you know, yes, our genocide is real. Um... And, and I think a lot of people just don't get it because, you know, we, uh, we are the nice Canadians and we're super kind and we're like, hey, everybody, we're really good. We're, we're just doing a little shh, little genocide over shh, it's cool. Um, but we are doing a little genocide over there and it's, it's not cool. It's not all right. The thing with, with the uh, debate there between uh, Lance and Destiny um, I, this morning I was, you know, I, I was watching uh, Lance commenting about it and, and that video where he was talking about the genocide and getting called out by Destiny. Um, it's just silly. There's no reason to have people act like this. Um, I, I just don't get it. So we can stop now. We can we can actually go back to like treating people like humans. And then the the trans thing, like I actually do think that, that is um it's intellectually dishonest. Um and I'm not saying Destiny's being intellectually dishonest, because I, I couldn't tell you if um Destiny actually has uh enough knowledge to to uh, on the subject of the security to be like, yeah, this is this is right or this is wrong or whatever. It just, it feels to me like um, if if someone knows what's happening, you can't avoid it. Uh, we're at, what, 1,300 um, bodies that have been found over five sites? Uh, that's five sites. There were, I think it's, it's something like 150 residential schools. So that's not a good percentage. And we're already at 1,300. That's terrifying. Um, that that should be a national embarrassment, um, and it and it needs to be taken and addressed by not just the everyone's po pointing at the Catholic Church. It's like every fucking church ran one of these residential schools at some point, and uh, although admittedly the Catholics ran the most of them, but I don't think that anyone else was was kind. The residential school program was inherently unkind and cruel. Um, so it's not just the Catholic Church that needs to apologize, and that program came from on high. So any apologies kind of have to come from all the big people, like Justin Trudeau. So that's that's kind of all I wanted to say about about the, that uh, those two things. Basically, trans people, um, their names are matter and they should be respected and you know like like any other human being would if someone got married or divorced we change their name because we respect them enough so let's just do the same thing for trans people and one of destiny's comments was like well then anyone can come in and be like my name is pickle arse mcdougall fucking yeah i mean technically but you probably wouldn't hire someone like that um and and you know, maybe Google would because Google is kind of a strange and fucked up place. But like, I just don't think that's a real argument. 